after a little bit of a delay, after a little bit of a uh, change in the schedule, I'm back. I think if we chant loud enough, we might be able to get Steve to come back too. So just at your at your computer or at your tablet or your phone, wherever you're at, just start chanting, Steve, 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 Steve. And maybe he'll hear you coming through. Uh, hey, welcome. My name is Dave Shrine, and Steve Edwards will be sitting in this chair momentarily. He's getting himself some come-along coffee. Sometimes you just got to get that fuel in the system to get through the end of the day. It's 3 o'clock out here in Arizona, and 3 o'clock in the afternoon is coffee time. I got a rule. How many cups of coffee do I have? One cup of coffee for every child that bears my last name in my family because I got nieces and nephews. So three cups of, excuse me, three cups of coffee a day. We get together every Wednesday to talk mules and donkeys. Uh, it's a lot of fun. This program is guided 100% by you and whatever questions you have or issues you're working through. So go ahead, uh, start typing your questions in there. Matter of fact, before you do that, Give us your name, where you're watching from, and what the weather is like. That way we can say hello to you. Uh, that's the first thing that we ask. Steve, 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 is sending us some come along coffee for da, 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 the clinic this weekend. That clinic is happening this weekend. And uh, if y'all have not signed up, y'all get signed up. It's going to be good stuff. Come out here, get yourself some come along coffee. Meet Steve, meet myself, meet the other folks from the Queen Valley Mule Ranch family. Uh, and uh, meet some mules. Everybody wants to meet some more mules and donkeys. So, uh, hey, good to have you, Steve. How have things been since last week? Of course, we uh, we had to miss our uh, we had to miss our Wednesday last week, and then we had some things conflicting on Thursday. So we did that pre-recording, and I think folks like that, all right. But how have things been since then? Well, I've been busy around here with my honeydews, you know. Uh, my wife says getting ready to have the clinic, so I'm thinking I gotta get this done, this done, this done, this done. That's all well and good, except for she wants that done, that done, that done, and that done, along with this done. So my done's, I'm almost done. <laughs> Mentally and physically. Woo. That's good. Well, hey, knock it off the list so that you can focus 100% on this weekend. It all starts on Friday, carries into Saturday, and then wraps up on Sunday. It's going to be a lot of fun. If you're watching this in the future, hello from the past. We hope you'll be able to join us for a Queen Valley Mule Ranch clinic at some point in time again. Uh, but for the time being, We'd love to know you're watching, where you're wa where you're watching from, and what the weather's like. Second thing, start asking any any and every mule question you got, and uh, you ask that you say that to some folks up at the mall. They might look at you like, really? Any mule question I got? Do they like to eat? Yeah, they like. Okay, okay. But you ask that to this group, and the questions just come raining down, raining down like the monsoons of Arizona. So any question you got is good. And then the third thing we ask is that you share the broadcast. Uh, you can do that on YouTube by liking and subscribing and just go ahead and saying hello. The comment lets YouTube know that, hey, folks are watching this and they're not just watching with their ears turned off. And then on Facebook, you can click the like button and then click either share or tag a friend or family member. Let's go ahead and say hello to a few folks who are hanging out with us already. And then I've got some questions that came in from last week because our program was uh, pre-recorded. Had some questions that came in from last week that we can go ahead and talk about. We got Christine watching. Christine, I got your question here from last week. Columbia, Tennessee, 58 and raining. Polly is watching from Barnesville, Minnesota, where it's plus 38. Windy with rain, snow mixed together. You just don't know what type of miserable it's going to be. We've got Misty watching from Montana, cold and windy. My Arab mule and our Arab horse have a love-hate relationship. He loves her. She hates him. What can we do? Billy says, happy Wednesday, gentlemen. Billy watching from Toronto, Canada. Hey, you know what that means when we got folks watching from across 
National lines, that means we've gone international, and Billy, you get the first glockenspiel of the day. Welcome. I've got your questions too here. Matter of fact, let's go ahead and get started with our first question. This one came from Faye. She asked it on Facebook last week. How often do you recommend the teeth be floated? Every spring, once a year. So, uh, you know, the spring, they're starting to get rid of their winter hair. Um, they've gotten pretty fat and this sort of thing. And have been a lot of folks, you know, you feed a lot of uh, uh, hay and this a lot more hay during the winter time because you want that type of uh, feed in their digestive system so it keeps them warm. So anyway, uh, every, every uh, spring come uh, springtime, I go to do it. You, and you can test them too, by the way, you know. Take your upper jaw and lower jaw and move them back and forth. And you're going to see me do that on this uh, clinic this weekend. I want to talk a lot about teething in this where it's very important. Yeah, uh, you, I've heard that quite a bit. One of the first things that did not make sense when you and I were hanging around, Steve, I was like, man, folks are saying that their animals having trouble walking or trouble with their back or whatever. And you're like, get the teeth floated. Yep. I'm like, what? doesn't make any sense well when you started to explain it about how when they you know put their head down and then it adjusts it like alters their jaw and then all of the sudden they've got sharp pointy stuff happen right here yeah. and they're uncomfortable they're going to try to get i think this was it try to get their head back up and all these sorts of things cause problems and the teeth are just connected to so many different behavior things that you'll want to make sure you don't have issues with. So great question. Thanks so much for asking that one. Um, back over here uh, for today, we've got Lisa watching. How can uh, a saddle fit a 50 inch mule and a 17.3 mule? 50 inch mule and a 17.3 mule. So they're talking high and big. So you're only looking at the, the, how big an animal is. You're not looking at uh, their bone structure. Okay. So what are we going to do? Put a 25 inch saddle on the 16 hand and a 12 inch saddle on the smaller one. No, you know, uh, I wish I had a, if I had a saddle for all the mules that I've trained over the years, uh, I'd have to have a lot of saddles. I have a 19 inch and 19 and a half inch bar and that 19 and a half inch bar will fit everything. We'll do everything. Uh, <coughs> Uh, if you go to my website, you'll see me riding a 13-2 uh, Welsh pony mule, and I'm roping off of him. And that same saddle, which you can see, Dave, they need to go to my Mastering the Mule Saddle Fit program and, uh, and, and watch that stuff. They'll see me fit anywhere from a 13-2 Welsh pony mule up to a 17-hand Pertron gray mule. Yeah, so I just put I put a link in the comment section for the Mule Saddle training course. And y'all, I went to bat for you on this one. Not that Steve didn't want to do it, but he was just like, well, I've never really, I don't know, we, we can. I said, no, I think people will really like this. And they have. We put together, uh, let's see, yep. it's 13 parts. It's a 13-part uh, uh, video course. It goes from how mules are shaped the horse tree versus the mule tree, saddle sizing for mules, uh, saddle sizing for rider, measuring cinches, putting on the saddle, properly adjusting the bridge in, importance of the breast collar, watch how the mule moves, using a horse saddle, dental work, riding, chiropractic, um, and uh, saddle questions, just general saddle questions. Some of them are as short as 90 seconds, some of them are about 15, 20 minutes long. But it goes through everything you need to know about getting results when you're riding in the saddle. And so it's free. So that's one of the F-bombs we like to drop here. Actually, that's the only F-bomb we drop here. You can have the kids around, it's okay. We yeah. drop the F-bomb of free, and that is the Mule Saddle Training Course. So I just put that in the comment section. Y'all check that out. Um, so great question, uh, appreciate that. Let's keep, uh, let's keep cruising along here. And uh, next question, actually, Cowboy Ken is watching from Connecticut, 48 cloudy and off rain. Jack is watching from Johannesburg, 40 and drizzle today. My mule is starting to shed finally. She usually finishes mid-June. I would like to trim her or clip her this year. Any tips? No, don't trim them and clip them. Leave that alone, y'all. You know, you're not showing these mules. 
let them naturally shed off and go from there. Just brush them. They enjoy brushing. Just get the brush out and brush them and kick back and relax. Don't go, you're not showing them at the world championships. We used to go through all that of, oh man, for by the hours of preparing for the world championship. Don't do it. You don't need to. Listen, if you want a way that's natural to trim them up, throw a blanket on them. Yeah, it'll get hot. They'll start shutting off pretty quick and boom, you can, you can brush them down. But no, you don't need to, you don't need to do that. Don't get your shears out. Just leave your shears alone. And the only one needs shears right now, I think, is Dave. Maybe here, maybe there. Up on, I don't know. Up on, top here. up on top a little bit. Yeah. We'll see. We'll see. I was I was fixing my hair this morning, and Stevie, my five-year-old, he just looks at me and goes, how come your hair's so crazy? I was like. <laughs> Only from Stevie, you know? Yeah. yeah. From the mouths of babes. Oh, uh, yeah. Sherry got a question. She sent this in last week on Facebook. She says, I'm going to say, the, actually, it's a comment. The come along rope saved my relationship with my mule. It made that big of a difference. It changed her attitude towards me. Now she participates with me instead of against me. She will even follow me over obstacles at liberty. Liberty. Now when I go to her corral, she meets me at the gate. She used to go to the back of the corral, pin and poop. I feel like that's what my kids did. Uh, very early on, try get away from me and go in the corner and poop it all out. Uh, so I I get that there, uh, Sherry. Thank you so much for sending that in. We really appreciate it. Uh, this one came in from Christine. So Christine, here you go. Question: Last summer I overfed my mule and she got small fat pads above her rib cage. I was careful all winter and now all spring. She looks lighter, but will fat pads reduce or disappear? It's going to take a lot of riding now, Christine, uh, a lot of riding. And folks, look, it's not so much the overfeeding, it's the type of feed. Get that in your mind. They can have, uh, you know, a, a lot of hay, but, uh, and, and that roughage is really important for, to maintain the heat in their body to get through the winter. But it, it is what's in the feed. Listen, folks. It's, it's extremely important that you know what is in your feed, okay? Lots of ways to get it tested. You can even have the company that you're buying it from tell you what's in the hay because you cannot believe the difference it makes when you're feeding good feed, especially with mules. Those fat pockets can be a mess, you know? And just like us, you know, uh, me anyway, uh, you know, you, you, you can look down and know you used to have a belt buckle, you know, so you got to, and you gals know where your fat pockets are. So anyway, next day. <laughs> uh, moving right along. Uh, we've got, uh, let's see. Christine also says, I'll be trading my Henny, my Henny mare, training my Henny mare, mare to drive. What bit should I start with? The snaffle bit? Yeah, she's going to start, always start with the, ground communication kit from there into the mule riders martingale from there you're going to be going into the uh, foundation driving bit full cheek bit and then as you progress you go into the liverpool bit you know if you follow those side those basic guidelines and make sure they're solid you'll have a big difference in your mules the problem with the driving is this when you have long lines that's a lot of leverage on that bit and we tend to over pull. Now I've got a video that'd be really good for you, Christina, called uh, uh, communicating through the lines, lines. Now this is driving, not reins, where you learn how to just turn your wrist and go. What drivers end up doing a lot of is pulling, pulling, okay? Your hand, your elbows should stay out here, and you should have your elbow slightly bent. You should never, ever over bend your elbows and pull back to you. Should always take up lines. Anyway, there you are, Christina. Try that video out, uh, uh, communicating through the lines. It'll teach you a lot. Christine, I put a comment uh, in the comment section with a link to that video. You can check it out. And Teresa is what- Dave, we, gotta, we gotta keep in our mind, folks, you know, humans are agrarians. In other words, they got to have a tool to fix something, all right? 
And that's all well and good. It is not the bit. It is not the bit. Get that in your mind, folks. It is your hands. And we're going to focus on a lot of that, Dave, this, uh, this weekend. Uh, I'm going to I'm gonna really focus on that. It is not the bit. What kind of bit? No, no, no. It could be your hands. I can use one of the worst bits in the world. But when I learn what the meal is doing, when I use my hands, I can get a lot done. There awesome. Uh, let's see. Next comment here. Uh, Teresa's watching from Kennedy Meadows, California. Beautiful weather. Hey, Yolanda's here from the Netherlands. There we go. International. Hey, Yolanda. Thank you, Yolanda. Uh, let's see. Richard Matthews. Hey, Chaplain Steve and Chaplain Dave. Good afternoon. Good afternoon, Captain. Now, appreciate there's it. There's an awesome captain. That's right. Yep. Tell them, for the folks who don't know, Steve, tell them what you mean. Well, uh, I'm a, a, a <laughs> kind of a kind of unique being retired and doing this, but I'm a firefighter out here in Queen Valley. And, but I'm not a full-time firefighter. I'm just there to, you know, uh, what, what would you call me, Dave? I just a helper, uh, you know, but anyway. Volunteer? I, I, volunteer. That, that sounds a little bit more better than helper, volunteer. Yeah. Anyway, I volunteer. So do you go through the same training? Yes, we have excellent, excellent trainers like Captain Matthews here. Uh, he's an excellent trainer. His wife is a nurse and they're both EMTs. So when, you, when you're there, you learn a lot from them. And then we're fortunate enough to have Mark Blackstone and his wife, uh, Elaine, and they're, they're uh, Mark is a retired firefighter from uh, Apache Junction. He's been in there 30 some years and it's just awesome. Uh, Elaine teaches all the paramedic stuff and EMT stuff, college level, and you, you can't go through, get EMTs or, or, or paramedic classes without going through Elaine's class. So anyway, out there, we, we are our volunteers. There's only two full-time firefighters, and there was another, a bunch of us firefighting, and uh, I still go out on car accidents. I go out on EMS class, uh, EMS uh, programs, uh, you know, where we got people with heart attacks, we set up airplanes. We, I mean, helicopters. Uh, we do a lot of wildland firefighting, which we're doing now. But this wouldn't be possible if it wasn't for guys like Captain Matthews to be able to say, "Hey, that's a good way to do it, but this would be better." And that's the kind of fire department we have. Awesome. Thanks for sharing that. Good to have you here, Captain. Uh, Teresa says, when I used the Martingale, it's very loose. Can I use a breast collar with it? Now, first thing, Teresa, I want to make sure that you know this is for the mule. It's not for a person. If you try to put it on a person, it's going to be a little loose. Hey. Now that I've made my dad joke, Steve, what would you say there exactly. for uh, Teresa? Okay. Number one, folks, this is a tool. All right. And it's not going to be just put on there just right. It has to work correctly. Now, when I go out on the uh, side of a mountain punching cows, I'm going through a lot of brush and stuff. I mean, it's thick. That mule has to flat duck his head sometimes to go through a lot of this brush. It can be pretty tough and pretty thick. So uh, I sometimes will let, just let it hang, let it go. Or sometimes I will take the adjustment strap go through the front D-ring of my breast collar and down into my cinch. But don't worry about it. It's been fine. I have gone through, if you see some of my country, it's thick and nasty, lots of thorns. It should be just fine. Awesome. Great question. Thank you very much, uh, Teresa. Uh, Laurel is watching from Minnesota, rainy, snow, and cooler. Have a question. The feed you recommend to feed is not available in Minnesota. What do you recommend to feed? Well, that's, that's tough. Folks, take the ingredients that's in that lake and light, go to your store and, and find out, see if you can find something similar to it. Now, here's the problem. When you see the lake and light, it's about as big around as my finger and can be as long and shorter. All right. And, and it's pretty heavy. Now, here's the thing. When the pellet gets wet, it expands two to three times its size, helps the mule, helps the donkey feel like he's full. Now, here's the key thing with this. We set up the ingredients 
for the mules because of what we learned watching them on a daily basis, training, going up mountains, pulling wagons, packing. We seen their, their dietary needs. That's why we come up with the type of feed that we have that I use, Lake and Light. Now, if you, you, if you can't find that feed or get it, which I know you can't up there in Minnesota, take it down to your local feed store and say, hey, I want something like this. Now, here's the other thing. It's okay to feed hay. The only problem with the hay is, and you, you'll hear me talk about this, you don't know what kind of body parts are in that hay. Yeah, I said body parts, okay? Snake parts, rat poop, bird poop, bird parts. In some countries, uh, farms, deer, yeah. Yeah, that's right. I'm sorry, folks, but it does happen, you know? The problem is you don't know what's in there. And when you do an analysis, when you take it in and get an analysis on the feed and get an analysis on the, uh, the hair samples, then you can know for sure what is in that feed. Because here's the biggest problem, folks, we have to deal with with feed and we have to deal with uh, with our animals, with our equine, is salmonella. That's the thing about the pellets is that all that's cooked out of it when they get their feed is a pure feed. I have not had any problems with colic for 25 years plus because I feed that fed, that lake and light. Okay, now next. Can you get Bermuda hay and feed it to them? Yes, okay. Again, folks, take the hay in, get it tested, see what vitamins and minerals are in that hay and then feed it. Now, here's the downside of this, all right? When we did this at Pierce College in LA, we did this hay, this feeding program. 10 animals on one side got fed nothing but pellets. 10 animals on the right-hand side got fed nothing but hay. Now, we weighed each animal and we weighed all the feed that we fed to them. At the end of one month, the animals that were being fed pellets were in excellent condition. Heart rates, breathing rates, muscle mass, things like this. But here's the key thing. The pile of manure that was in the pellets was a quarter. Hear that? Probably a quarter easy of the pile of manure that was in the hay. That's right. Okay. They, you, you're wasting a lot of benefit from that hay because it, it's not set up like pellets is to where everything they need is in that pellet. And when it gets wet, it expands, they feel like they're fed, okay? You do not have to keep feed in front of them all the time. You're not feeding them to butcher, folks. You're not. You're feeding them according to the program that you're going to be having. You're going on a long trail ride, feed them accordingly. Feed them some whole oats as well. The whole oats will give them the energy. The whole oats will help their top line. The whole oats will keep the, keep, let them, let, your, let the mule's body naturally feed off of the fat, fat. And that's important when you got a lot of fat pockets. But listen, it is so easy, very easy to grass founder a mule or a donkey. You already heard one of my clients, I think it was Christina, saying that, you know, she kind of overly fed, da, 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 and now she's got some heavy fat pockets. Yes, yes, and yes. Just like us, the older we get, the easier it is to get out of shape. Oh, yeah. Okay? Now, get this in your mind. Therefore, the fat pockets will start showing up. And when it really gets really bad, grass founder. Now you've got a founder mule. Now, hopefully, it would only be in the neck or the ribs, but when it gets down into the feet, no feet, no mule. No feet, no donkey. Coffee. <laughs> Cue the coffee. Uh, all right, here, we've got, uh, hey, David Pengelly, big storms in Georgia. Are these the big storms right here, David? Big storm one, big storm two. <laughs> Johnny. Johnny. Yeah. There you go. Hans and Franz. Stay safe out there, David. Uh, Paul is watching. Let's see here. Teresa, we have the come-along rope uh, rope halter 
training video combo in stock. Go ahead, check it out. I'll put a link in the comment section in a minute. You can go check it out and get yours ordered. Um, Stacy, watching from Colorado, 48 degrees and very windy. Hey, Steve, that's you. Have you ever had to make an emergency dismount and do you rec recommend practicing? And I'm assuming she means with a mule or a donkey and not in gymnastics. Yeah, she's talking to folks that <clears throat> emergency dismounts are what the people who write English do. My emergency dismount is called a hold on to the night latch. Night latch. David, I don't know if we got any pictures still of the night latches or not, but I don't jump off of my mule. All right. I, if the mule goes to bucking, I'm either going to get bucked off or I'm going to stay with it. And with 32 broken bones and two replaced hips, I've been hit the ground a bunch of times. All right. But otherwise, no, I don't practice in emergency dismounts. I don't use it. Now, here's the problem with the emergency dismount. When people do this, they kick both feet out from the stirrups and they try to lay on their belly and slide out the side. That can be horrendously dangerous. Okay. Just the big problem is most folks ride with heels up and toes down. You're automatically forward. When you're riding, folks, lock that heel in there. Heels down, toes up, ride with a boot that has a good heel. When you ride that way, that sets you back in the saddle. Okay. When your mule goes to being a problem, grab the night latch, hold on to it, hold on to the reins, and go. Or my preferred thing is right, left, right, left, right, left with my hands. I would rather the mule go to the hospital than me. So emergency dismounts, that is not in a uh, in my vocabulary. Um, moving right along, we've got Hannah watching from Denilon, Ocala, Florida, 84 degrees and windy. David is watching from East Texas, 70 and sunny. Billy is here again. What advice do you have on brushing and similar basic hygiene? Do you have someone... With zero experience with mules and donkeys, thank you. Do you have? Yeah. Well, you brushing, brushing is a very, very important tool, folks. What I mean by that is that mule needs to feel you. And I, let me give you an idea of what I do. Here's my cowboy brush. I've got a leather glove. I wipe them down. I brush them. I touch them all over their feet and their legs. And I look at their feet. As I'm looking, I'm looking for sores. But I take a leather glove and I brush them off, put the saddle on, go to work. Okay. If I had to curry comb every single mule that I rode, I would never get anything done. But let me tell you, it's very relaxing. It's good for the mule. It's good for you. Uh, old Tom Dorrance used to say, yeah, on a windy day, it's a good time to be brushing. What he meant by that was this. On a windy day, the mules are looking for monsters. In this case, Tom would be talking about horses because they're booger monsters, looking for the monsters. Every time the bushes move, they think there's a monster behind it. So on a windy day, good day to brush and relax and take your time. All right. Let's see here. Bobby is watching. Actually, Carol is watching on Bobby's account. Hey, Carol, does Bobby know? Does Bobby know? From St. James, Missouri. Uh, let's see. 50 degrees and windy. We got Angie watching from Southern Colorado. 53 and very windy. Our mare had a Bay John Mule Colt late Sunday night. Heart emoji. We're excited for the future with him. Hey, Angie, send in some pictures. That'd be fun to see. Andrea is watching from Florida where it's sunny, hot, and humid. I guess that's going to be the forecast in Florida for the foreseeable future. Hannah is watching, says, I have received your video come along. Uh, I cannot follow how to formulate the come along uh, halter by following the tape. Help. So it is a little tricky to get the come along hitch onto the animal. And so there's really two things I've got for you. Number one is come out 
to Queen Valley Mule Ranch during one of our clinics. We just so happened to have one this weekend. Come out to Queen Valley Mule Ranch for a scheduled clinic and learn how to do it with Steve right there. Now, for those of you, and there's only a couple of you who aren't coming, so for the rest, the other two of you, uh, the best thing that I have to offer is our YouTube channel. And you're going to say, oh, I've watched, the, I've watched the video on YouTube. Well, what I want to tell you is that there's several videos. And here's what I did. It is tricky to put on the come along rope. And so I filmed the come along rope being put on three or four different times from three or four different angles. So if you go to the YouTube channel, I'm going to put a link in the comment section. In the Queen Valley Mule Ranch channel, there is a playlist all about installing the come along rope. And I'm looking at it now. I've got four different videos. Hannah, that's the best that I can offer. Uh, Steve's more than willing to talk to you over the phone, but putting on the come along hitch is kind of difficult to do over the phone. I would just say keep at it. Uh, don't give up. And once you get it, you've got it. And uh, it's a lot like tying a shoe. Steve, anything else you'd say to uh, Hannah? No, I can tell you, Hannah, when I first started using it, I just couldn't quite figure it out. Uh, I, I had old, my old buddy who taught me, Nick West, out of Canada. I talked to him several times. and I even had him right there at my ranch showing me several times, and I'd still lose it. You know, So don't expect to get it right off the bat. You'll get it. You'll be fine. Just watch those great videos that Dave put together. Uh, we've got a comment here from... Um Got a comment here from, uh, let's see here. Paula says, I love the push buttons to get the mule to pick up their hooves. So if you all don't know what Paula's talking about, I just put a link in the comment section uh, to a YouTube video where you can see exactly what she's talking about. And it is pretty cool when you get that working uh, the way that it's meant to work. And then you come out to the clinic this weekend, uh, we're going to be pushing some buttons. Uh, you best believe it. It's going to be a lot of fun. The fun button. Uh, let's see here. Reyes is watching. I love the saddle course and love my Steve Edwards saddle. That is a comment I'm going to have to take a screenshot of and send that out to the people. Uh, Jackie is watching. I want to buy a mule trail bit for my broke mule. It looks like your bits are out of stock. When will they be back in stock? So um, last I heard, we don't have an estimate on when they're going to be back in stock. Steve can speak to that. But Steve, will you also talk about what we've learned uh, in the midst of being out of the trail riding bit when you've spoken with people, what we've actually learned from them? Absolutely. Folks, again, it's not the bit that does the communicating. It is your la your hands. It's not just your hands, it's how you use your legs. It's not how you use your legs, it's how you use your hip and the saddle. All of these things make up, I'm communicating with the mule, with the donkey. So what I have found when I ask you this, can you one-handed, side pass, turn on the forehand and turn on the hand quarters. If so, you are ready for the trail rider bit. If you have to use two hands or if you cannot ride 80% minimum off of your legs, you are not ready for the finished bit, okay? The finished bit is very precise, very precise. You'll get an awesome communication when you're using it right. So where would I start? Ground communication kit first. Mules learn more from their nose than they do from their mouth. They care less about their mouth. So we get them going really good with the come along rope, very little using the rope halter. And by the way, Dave, this weekend, we're gonna use the rope halter and you're gonna see how I use it. But you're also gonna see me more than anything else, use that come along hitch. And by the way, the bits are going to be available in about 10 days. Uh, I think they're going to be five and a half inches. Uh, and when they are available, we'll put it on the website and go from there. Hey, so folks, uh, what, I, what I do is anybody who messages me about interest in the bit, um, I put them on a special list. And when Steve tells me that we got them in, 
I send an email out to that special list and then one day later, I send an email out to everybody on the list. So if you wanna make sure that you have an opportunity, cause they went the first day we had them last time. Um, if you wanna make sure that you've got an opportunity, send a message to support at muleranch.com and just say, let me know when bits ha when the trail riding bit is back in. I'll add you. When Steve met, lets me know they're in, I'll send you a message. You've got about less than 24 hours to decide to purchase and then a message goes out to everybody um, and they'll be they'll be gone. So that's just the way that we help the folks who have been waiting for them know about them first, but you gotta hop on it right away. Um, let's see here. Paula is watching from Port Angeles, Washington. Lydia is watching from Ontario, Canada, and that means we've gone international again. Jackie is watching from Placidas. Hey, can't wait to see y'all on Friday. Jackie, I was wondering if you were gonna come. Enjoy the drive over, but we're looking forward to having you here. That's going to be a lot of fun. Uh, Yolanda is looking to propose. Steve, David, I have a question proposal. So put it in there, Yolanda. We'll see what we got. Jim is watching live from Western Maryland, Maryland, 55 degrees and sunny. Hey, Jim, good to have you here live. Jim, for those of y'all who don't know, Jim watches just about every single video that we put up on YouTube and he puts a comment in there. Hey, Jim from Western Maryland watching. So it's good to have you here live, Jim. Appreciate you making the time. Uh, Acura is watching. Oh, Lacey is using Akira's uh, account. Gallatin, Gateway, uh, Montana, cloudy and windy today, listening at work. Don't let them catch you, unless it's equine work. Then, of course, they're going to be like, oh, free education, go for it. Uh, Tanya is watching from Penrose, Colorado. Michelle is watching from Montreal, which means we've gone international again. We got Patty here from Nebraska, insanely windy. Really hate that I couldn't attend your clinic. Hoping to come from next time. We're hoping the same thing, Patty. Thank you so much for being here today, though. Lisa's watching from Pennsylvania. Temp's about 50-ish. Just got in from Ears Acres, caring for the small donks and a medium mule. There you go. How fun. Myra is watching one year later, and I'm finally figuring out how best to communicate and develop a, a relaxed trust and communication with my Soji. So much of it has had to do with me and working through very small steps of foundation work. Your weekly podcast and patient clarifications have helped me a lot to understand the many variables to problems solve her issue. Uh, we're making really good progress now. Now that that don't, if that don't light your fire, your wood is wet, my friends. Is yeah. that not the best? Yep, I love it. I I, I got a I got an email this morning from a client. He ordered bridging, breast collars, saddles, everything, you know. And at the very end of it, you know, we got a little place for comments. And his comment was, "Thanks for all your help." You know, by golly, you know. David, that's what I'm looking for. The thanks for your help. When people tell me they're getting it, when they when they've done, they've taken like the one lady, the mule that had just just like her. And now the mule can't wait to spend time with her, folks. It's the relationship is what's important. Okay. Uh, I remember uh, years ago, the head packer at the Grand Canyon. He told me he'd tell you. You know, a meal would give you your li his life for you if you just treat him decent, you know? And, yep. uh, and, and he's exactly right. Them, these mules are great, folks. We just got to treat them like a mule and not like a horse. That's right. That's right. You treat them the way God created them, the way that God intended, and, uh, and they'll respond to that. So very good. Love to hear that, Myra. Thank you. Uh, matter of fact, real quick, uh, she said podcast. Uh, so we do this live. Uh, weekly. Uh, we're going to be trying some changes here in the future. We'll let you know about that. But one thing that I wanted to make sure that you knew about is that all of our past episodes are available on YouTube. And because of the format of this show, it really makes sense to have it available as a podcast as well. So what's the difference? Well, on YouTube, you go, you can watch the video, see things like this. Whereas if you're using an Android or a, an iOS device, like an iPhone, iPhone or an Android phone, you can go into the podcast app, Google Podcasts or Apple Podcasts, search for Mule Ranch Podcast, and you will find 
the Mule Ranch audio experience. And basically, you've got at your fingertips immediately 47 episodes that you probably have not heard and you don't necessarily need to see because, you know, this is kind of a chat. It'd be hard to do a clinic, like a like a on-hands, uh, you know, on-the-ground clinic over a podcast. But um, this type of Q&A clinic, it's really good. So I'm going to put a link in the comments section. Y'all can click that link. There will be uh, there will be an option to subscribe. You can pick po- Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts. You can pick Spotify, Stitcher, TuneIn. Just about anywhere you listen, you can get the podcast delivered to your phone. And uh, when you're in the car, you don't have to worry about uh, finding the videos. It'll just play one pa- podcast after the next. We've got uh, Ashley uh, from Minnesota watching cold and rainy. Yolanda says, David, would you please share the progress of my mule's leg how it was and how it is now. Picture in your messenger and I have a question. Okay, Yolanda, it, so I have a lot of stuff going on when we're doing this, so it's kind of hard for me a lot of times to find stuff while we're in the middle of the show. I'll see if I can get it real quick, but go ahead and ask your question and we'll see if I can't get it this time, we'll get it for next time. Uh, let's see here. Paula says, when will you have the Mule Riders Martingale back in? We've got that in right now, don't we, Steve? Oh, yeah. Yeah, we got plenty of them. Yeah, let me go check it out right here. I'm going to uh, Bits. I'm on the website right now, muleranch.com. And, uh, yeah, Mule Riders Martingale is in stock. So it's your lucky day, Paula. Lisa says, using Steve's advice from last time, I checked out a dental chart for uh, small donkeys that I don't own but are in my care. I'm 98% sure that one is two and a half and the other maybe is four-ish. Uh, dentist is coming this month. Our mule Stanley is six. Sorry, I forgot to say this in our previous, uh, continuation. There we go. Awesome. Very good. Um, let's see here. Did that, she was just sharing some info that wasn't following up with a question that I missed. Is it Steve? No, I think she's just sharing some info. Okay, cool. Uh, if there's any specific question, Lisa, let us know. Uh, let's see here. Christine says, come along, hitch goes on simpler than you think. Don't overthink it. That is a great point. After seeing Steve do this for 15 years, that's probably the best way I've heard it said. Don't overthink it. It's a lot simpler than it it looks. Good job, Christina. That's good. Um, Bill is sharing to the mules of Ohio. Rain and clouds finally moving out for a little while. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Here, this this is up and coming here. Watch this. Uh, talk about the mules of Ohio. There's a possibility that uh, you mules in Ohio have got something up and coming here. Let me find this here, Dave. I've, um, my goodness, I had it earlier and I went and lost it, but that's the way it goes. Yeah, let's see here. Go ahead and go on, Dave, and I'll find it in here someplace. All right, very good. We'll keep moving right along. Jerry is watching from Montana. Question, how long does it take for mules to adapt, quiet down, and stop pacing the fences after being put in a corral? My mules can see the horse buddies in pasture. Will they ever stop, Steve? Uh, Yeah, they will eventually, but just be patient. You know, they see their horse buddies. They want to be with them. That's another, it's an equine and will they quit pacing? Yes, okay? Do you have to be patient? Yes, you do. Uh, you gotta remember, before you had them, they probably with a whole lot of other animals and uh, they got a chance to stay together. Now, here's the other thing, folks. I keep all of my animals in 10 by 20 stalls, everything. Nothing's out roaming around on its own. That way, everybody, everybody is treated the same, but everybody, okay? can see each other right there in the corral next to them. Then we don't have that problem, you know? Yeah, they wanna be with their buddies. They're subservient to the horses. They wanna spend time with one another and uh, it's just the it's just the way that they're made. Um, let's see here. Uh, Lisa says, I have the donkeys now totally giving me their feet when I use the button. This is almost miraculous as they couldn't even be handled last July. Owner knows nothing, so we care for them. Thanks. There we go. That's an awesome report, Lisa. Wow. Thank you so much. Yeah. Uh, That's great. Yep. Roger is watching from uh, Milan, New York. Cloudy and 50 degrees. 
Uh, James gave us the big thumbs up. Thanks, Jim. Appreciate it. Debbie is watching from Gra Battleground, Washington. Sunny and beautiful here today. Love hearing that. Just want to say thank you on my new saddle and equipment. I love it. I was so excited. I got it a bit sooner than expected. Awesome to hear that, Debbie. Thank you. All right. What do we got there, Steve? What are we looking at? We that... could be using this facility in Ohio. Nice. We could be this fall doing a clinic here. Okay. Nice. And and this is uh, uh, it's it's uh, well. Let me see here. Pebble County Fairgrounds. All right, Pebble County, Ohio. And uh, there, it's going to be. Uh, it's, it can be a big clinic. He's right now been talking with a lot of people, been looking at the temperatures. We're probably looking at October, most likely. But looks like a nice facility. And you folks in Ohio and Michigan and Indiana and this sort of thing, uh, hopefully we can see you there. Now, it says here they have over 1,200 members in Mules of Ohio page. 1,200 members. And that's Facebook, Dave. That's not too shabby at all. Yeah. And, uh, and it said, thanks for all your information. Thanks for, you mentioned some guy by the name of Dave. Hey. Yeah, there he is. There the, dude he is. With so, the, the dude with the crazy hair, according to his yeah, five-year-old yeah. son. It's Preble, P-R-E-B-L-E -E County. That'll be fun. Okay. So, yeah, if, if people are interested, uh, you know, start texting us, emailing us. Hey, I'd like to be there. We want to get an idea of, of folks who would like me to do a clinic there. Now, as you folks know, I pretty much have been done with clinics. Okay, I'm 72, I'm, I've traveled, I've traveled, I've traveled, I've traveled. But I don't mind doing fun things to be able to go see my folks, you know, my friends like in Ohio, where we can get enough numbers and this sort of thing to be there because renting one of these type of programs is pretty expensive. So, something to think about. The other, the other clinics we got coming up, is we got one uh, uh, in uh, in Montana, and that's going to be uh, Labor Day weekend. And we've also got uh, a clinic. Uh, oh, what's the name of that place? Something like uh, Oh yeah, I remember now. But you have to be on an airplane, and the tough thing about that is being on the airplane. It's hard to get your meal on there. But a place called Costa Rica. Uh, Victor has been talking to me about doing that. So anyway, uh, there are some things I do like, you know, Dave, you know, I love doing it. Okay. Uh, but it is costly. And so therefore we need to be able to, especially if I'm going to come to Ohio in October, uh, the, uh, you know, the, the, the folks, you know, I would love to be there. So start to start letting us know, let us know. Are you interested? Then we'll be coming to Ohio. Hot dog. There you go. Good to have you here each and every week. Um, uh, uh, oh my gosh. I just, uh, uh, Bill, there we go. Mules from Ohio. There we go. Good to have you here each and every week. Let's get, let's get the, uh, Queen Valley Mule Ranch train on the tracks to Ohio. Uh, yeah. let's see. Yolanda says, would it be an idea that I will set up a video about my mule and the dangers you can get with bad hoof trimming, shoeing, and making the right shoes. Yeah, make that video, Yolanda. Make the video and we'll share it with folks. I think they'd love oh, to yeah. see it. Uh, let's see here. Rob is watching. Uh, got in here late, but you know what they say, Rob. Uh, just wondering if you will be recording any of the clinic this weekend and showing it on Facebook, Queen Valley and Beautiful Day. Yes, we will be recording. Yes, we will share some of it. It'll be a lot of fun. Catherine is watching from Italy. Hey, you get the glockenspiel too, Catherine. Uh, let's see. My donkeys are licking the earth again. Does Steve know why they do this? They have access to pure salt blocks. Thanks. Licking the earth? They're licking the corrals? Or... I guess, licking the ground. Okay, are they... Okay, so here we... You know, folks, when they start to do things like... Uh, eating manure or chewing on trees or sucking up sand, they're most likely lacking something in their diet. Remember, vitamins and minerals 
are really important. Some mules need more zinc. Some mules need more uh, vitamin A and B, yada, yada, just like you and I do, all right? We need specific vitamins and minerals because our body craves it and our body has to have it. So uh, when it comes down to your donkeys, get yourself a hair sample done or a blood test done by your veterinarian and see what they're lacking in the vitamins and minerals. Pure salt, is it block salt or is it granular salt, okay? But they do need to keep a lot of it around. And I do also keep each donkey in its own stall. Steve, next question. This one came in from Paula from last week. So Paula, if you're still here watching, just wants to know if she can use an Australian saddle on a mule. No, no, uh, Paula, they've only got the one cinch and the, the D rings are in the wrong place. And they've already talked to her about that. Uh, you know, uh, there's, there's a company that says that they can make the saddle to fit your mule. Problem is, if you just look at the basic makeups of it, there's no way it's going to make a mule where to ride good. The biggest problem with the Australian saddle is it rolls. Okay, it's really easy to roll. And that's where people have a hard time with these Australian saddles is their roll getting on, roll getting off. Now, uh, if you all, you Australians out there who was at my clinic there in Australia when, when uh, Dave and Di uh, brought me over there to, to Australia, uh, if you noticed, the majority of mules and donkeys had my equipment in Australia. There was only a couple people who did not but, uh, have them in the, in the, in the show. I, I uh, judged the National Mule and Donkey Show. And I also did a clinic and I also went to some ranches in Mount Eisner. Anyway, it's another story. They are using my saddles because of the way they fit. Yeah, it's that second cinch and the britching, which makes, I mean, there's the bars as well. Uh, the bars are shorter in Steve's saddles than they are in a quarter horse saddle. Um, and so that's appropriate for the length of the back and the way that the back is structured in the donkey. Uh, but it's also the, the second cinch. It's the, it's the rear cinch that matters. Well, it's all important, but it's the rear cinch that is going to be snug. The front cinch is going to be loose. And so if you've got a saddle that doesn't have place for a rear cinch, you're already missing a huge portion of what will keep that saddle in place and will, what will prevent the saddle from riding up on the scapula. It all works together, but that's a big part. Uh, our friend Billy asked a question, any saddle advice you'd give for a rider uh, over 250 pounds? And we've talked about this in the past, and uh, we do sell a triple duty saddle pad, which is you know kind of a must, um, but uh, you do have some general thoughts on this, Steve. What would you say? Yeah, the, uh, the, the big thing is, Mike, is when you start when you when you get into a bigger person, the biggest problem that we have is our industrial standards say 200 pounds, period. And that like say you go down the bottom of the Grand Canyon, they say 200 pounds. They won't go 200 pounds in one ounce, it won't do it. Biggest thing that you've gotta be concerned about folks is their tendons, blowing a tendon. Very easy to do and they can be crippled in a short time. Now, I, and the other problem that you have too, is a lot of folks, when they're, when they're the bigger folks, uh, they got to have more room between the pummel and the cannel. And the problem is when you start making a longer bar, now we're sitting directly up on top of the kidneys. Now we're putting a lot of extra pressure upon them because of where the bars are. So uh, I suggest to a lot of my riders that are bigger folks to ride in the, uh, what's called a trail, uh, a rancher saddle. It's uh, an A fork type saddle. It's not the 13 and a half inch pummel. It's about a nine inch pummel. And the thing about that is this, is it gives enough room for your thighs, okay? It's not so much our rump size, David, it is our thigh size, how much room do we have there? And so uh, that would be my suggestion. The next question uh, he asked is, you've talked about mules getting spoiled by too much affection. What would you say is a good guide to interacting and bonding with a mule, especially concerning safety? 
my space is my space. My mule, my donkey is never allowed to come into my space. You need to teach that in the very beginning. <clears throat> One of the downsides is this, Dave. When people raise babies, babies are so cute and cuddly and they want to come up and yada, yada, you end up with fluffy. You end up having like we had one guy last week where he was, the mule was actually rearing up on him uh, and they get to biting and kicking. And it could be tough. So the ground communication kits, uh, they teach you this is my space. This is your space. There's where I would start. That's great. Uh, let's see here. Uh, Catherine has a question. Oh, no, that we already answered that. Sherry's here from California. Hey, Trace is watching from Queensland, Australia. Been watching the MMM 2022. Uh, let's see. Roger is enjoying his coffee. That's all we got from Roger. That's well said, Roger. Uh, Roger let's see. Team. Yeah, yeah. Uh, let's see here. Teresa says, thank you for all your help. I love your products and instruction. Uh, Bill Rose says, yes, sir. Steve Edwards, we are working on it and should have some information tomorrow on attendance for the clinic. Sherman Johnson, Johnson's taxidermy is watching. We've got Joyce says, had a beautiful pasture ride this afternoon. Um, on Pearl, the mule springtime in, uh, a Alberta, Canada, international again. Lisa says, thanks to Steve and you, I don't feel like a failure as a first time long year owner. It is so different from horses, which is the most important thing I've learned. I cannot thank you both enough. That's really cool to hear. We appreciate that. Uh, let's see here. Christine says, it's about six hours to me from for me to Preble County, Ohio. Is it okay for a mule from Tennessee? I think they'd make an exception. Uh, for this the is for Christina. Yeah, yeah. No problem. Yeah, that's right. They'll make an exception for the mule. Now you, yeah. Chris, Christine, we, you may have to have a couple. <laughs> no, come on out. Uh, Jackie says, just got my saddle. So excited. Does it take a while for it to form to my mule? What do they need to do, Steve? Okay. As far as forming to your mule, is not a problem. We want to form it to you. Okay. Now, I believe Jackie got a cowboy saddle, it seems like. But here's the deal, folks. When you have leather, leather must be wet to shape it to you. Extremely important. No such thing as somebody can custom fit a saddle to make you comfortable. Nope, can't be done. What you can do is like with my saddles, I light oil them and that's all. After that, when you get that saddle, you take a spray bottle with soapy water in it. You spray the back half of the jockey. You spray the back half of the of the fenders and you wet it and then you ride and you wet it and you ride. And here's the most important part, folks, of this saddle. When you put it up, when you store it after your ride, always turn the stirrups, put a piece of PVC pipe in it or a broom handle something so that your fenders stay turned. <coughs> I just had a person send me a picture of a used saddle that somebody was going to buy or sell, I should say, is a trail, a trail rider saddle, and they didn't turn the fenders. The fenders were still straight. Always, always, always store your saddle with a, a, a broom handle through the stirrups. Now, don't just turn the stirrup and put it through. Twist the stirrup a couple times and put it through. Wet it and ride. Wet it and ride. Now, when you finally say to yourself, okay, I'm happy. This saddle's starting to feel good. I'm starting to be comfortable, then and only then, folks, then and only then do you quit wetting it, let it dry, then oil it. Now, I had a lady here the other day, Dave, that said she just can't get comfortable in the saddle. And I said, send me a picture, let me help you. Did you wet the saddle? Nope, she was bound to determine I just can't get comfortable in this saddle. Folks, if you give me a few minutes, I can help you, okay? Don't just keep buying another saddle, another saddle, another pad. Let me help you. I'll be happy to. This is this is Steve, and I am wanting to help you. Take advantage of it, folks. Uh, let's yeah. see here. We've got uh, Lisa says I'm behind on the sh on the show. In terms of Ohio, we live in northwestern Pennsylvania and can be almost anywhere in Ohio within eight hours or less. Keep us posted. Oh, we will keep you posted. There we go. Laura is watching from Delta, Ontario International. Again, we got a lot of our Canadian friends here today. They're wanting to get out there and enjoy the ride now that it's uh, warming up a little bit. 
For, she says, first nice spring-like day here. I bought a second mule and will need tack for him very soon. Big smiley face. Well, you know who to call, Laura. Who you gonna call? Steve Edward. Jackie says, just got my saddle. Yep, there we go. Judy, raining and 50s here in Ubly. Is it Ubly or Ubly, Michigan? Uh, Paula says, what about a treeless saddle? Can we ride a treeless saddle? Yeah. The only problem with treeless saddles, folks, is it cripples your mule. Listen. Oh, is that the only problem? <laughs> yeah. 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 So I need to get that across to you, folks. You know, you're so worried about your butt. What about their back? Listen, the purpose of a tree is to support your weight, evenly distribute your weight across that mule's back. <clears throat> That's his purpose. All right. Now, on a 19 and a half inch bar on my saddles, I only, I get this in your mind now, and you'll watch it on the videos. On a 19 inch bar, I only want 15 inches consistently on the mule's back by the scapula, and I don't want much pressure by the, the kidney. So I've got an average of 15 inches that's going to be solid on the animal. Now, you have a fat pocket on these mules. That fat pocket is where you're gonna have your driest, especially if you over tighten your front cinch. I can tell you, you over tighten the front cinch because that spot is dry, everything else is wet. I can also tell you that if you have a downhill hip, where are you gonna have dry spots? Right behind the shoulder. Now. Just because it's dry one day, you can go a few weeks later and have high humidity day and the whole back is as wet as can be. You cannot always go by wet and dry plus spots. Can't always do that. Now, what's so unique about the mule and donkey is they have a fat pocket right at the sixth and seventh rib and that is right where your front cinch is. Folks, over tighten the front cinch. Don't do that. If I had my way, I wouldn't even put a front cinch on it, you know, for most of you. Don't, if you've got dry spots behind that scapula, loosen up that front cinch. And don't tell me it's loose. Don't tell me that, okay? Because it's impossible for it to have dry spots if you got it loose. Uh, let's see here. Andrea says, I'm interested in the Fall Ohio Clinic. That will be closer than Arizona for me. We would love to have you come out. Just make sure that you tell Bill and make sure that Bill tells you who you got to call to make sure it happens. Ahmed is watching in North Dakota. We've got Linda says, finally here. Linda the mule servant and Theo, the sweet one-eyed mule. We were with the farrier. All right. Well, you're here now. And you know what? You came in right at the last second because you are our last question here, Linda. Why is a downhill hip bad? Isn't it just another natural shape? That'll be our last question for the day. What do you say, Steve? Confirmation. Listen, my favorite color is disposition. Okay? I don't care what color it is. If the mule's got an I love you type disposition, wanting to be with you. All right, next thing is confirmation. Because if your hip is high, guess what? You're always going forward. If your hip is high, guess what? Your saddle is pushing in behind the scapula. It is imperative, folks, that you look at confirmation, especially the top line. Most important part of a mule, top line. Because if you have a quarter type butt, that quarter type rump is made for quarter horses, working cattle, cutting low. <coughs> So the problem with the high hip is you continue to feel like you're forward. Problem with the high hip, you put a lot of pressure upon the scapula. That's why I developed the pad. The pad is not the instant fix, but it does help you. Now, if I took and made a saddle for a downhill hip, that means the front of the saddle would have to be three inches thick at the front and about a, an inch on the back. Can you imagine how ugly that saddle would be? You couldn't make up enough stuff to make up for the difference. So go back, you know, if you've already got the mule, well, what can you do? Downhill hip pad. 
if you've already got the meal, you're just going to have to work with it, you know. But here's the downside, folks. When you're buying a meal, look at disposition first, okay? Confirmation second. They're not going to be very straight-legged because, unfortunately, a lot of people don't maintain them when they're younger. Balance, balance, balance on your front feet. That makes straight legs. Happy trails. Nice seeing you all. Looking forward to seeing you at the clinic. Thanks again, Dave. You are awesome. Hey. Thank you, Steve. Appreciate it. Thank you all for being here. We know that you could be doing lots of different things with your time, and we're so grateful that you choose to spend a little bit of your Wednesday with us here. I uh, hope you enjoy the rest of your day. We'd love to have you come out to Queen Valley Mule Ranch. Uh, there's still time. Uh, do not show up the day of without a ticket. Uh, we need you to register ahead of time so we know how to prep and prepare. So go to muleranch.com, uh, get the t get your uh, clinic tickets there. And uh, it'd be fun to see you, be fun to meet you, be fun to hear your story, and be fun to uh, do some mule training together. Uh, Bill says, join us at Mules of Ohio on Facebook for more information on the clinic if you are interested. So look for Mules of Ohio on Facebook. Hey, Steve. Happy trails. Hey, Dave. Just like your son Stevie said, your hair sure is funny. Take a load. <laughs> <laughs>